Hello, everyone. It's Amy from Seriously Sweet and Cookie Snack Attack. I hope you guys are doing well today. Um, let's see. I just want to make sure. Yep, it looks like we're good. It looks like it's in all the groups. Plus, I just shared it over to my personal page. So if you'd rather watch from there, you can. And I did see you earlier today for part one of two of two Tutorial Tuesday. And we went over and finished some remaining items from our bonus video the other night. And then we talked about what we're going to do tonight, which is this awesome nutcracker. Then we finished up a couple of cookies that we started on our bonus night. And now we're going to do a cool experiment because... I love mad scientist experiments. They're so much fun and I learn so much from them. So I'm hoping you guys will too. This one I have not tested on my own. This is my first time to test all of these things. So I'll be doing that with you. We'll see what happens and I'll report back when this dries later. But I thought, perfect. We have five different areas on this cookie plus the fondant bits that we can test on. So let's do it while we have a great work surface, right? All right. Hey, Camille, how in the world are you today? I hope you're doing well. Everybody, please say hello. Tell me where you're watching from. And if I have any viewers from outside of the country, please tell me that too. I'm trying to keep my hair pinned up. It just keeps my bun so heavy today. It keeps falling. <laughs> I know I love experiment day. It's so much fun. And if you haven't signed up for live stream text alerts, please do that by texting the word live stream to 540-870-0726 and we will get you signed up for that as well. Hey, Miss Bobby. So this is totally unexpected. Um, hi, Rebecca. How are you? Because earlier I realized I've been gathering all of these things that I wanted to test to see what my favorite product is or what product I thought I would use the most. Hey, Donna, how are you? And Donna is joining us from South Carolina. Good to see you today. Thank you for joining in. So I've been gathering these different brands of products. Um, some I have because I used to use them on gum paste pieces and fondant pieces for cakes. And then others I have because I got them because Cookie Friends recommended them. So I thought it's probably time to break this down and see if they're actually different. And I will say there are also several videos on YouTube. I'm not going to recommend any one in particular because... The homemade stuff did not work great for me, so I'm just going to say that. I did try to make my own because it would be significantly cheaper. Um, because it's basically corn syrup and corn syrup and water mixture, or corn syrup and alcohol. I think you can do it with. It didn't dry with a nice hard glossy shell like I wanted it to. So I've kind of moved away from attempting to make my own and I'm going to leave that part to the YouTubers and the professionals that make confectioner's glaze. Hey, Barbara. Hi. And she's watching from Idaho. I'm glad you caught me. You missed the earlier one. This is going to be so much fun. So let me show you the bottles so that you understand the labels in case you watch this again later. And also quick shout out to a friend, Heather Broussard, who made these beautiful cups. I can't turn it because I've already put Everclear in it. But she made us these beautiful Cookie Snack Attack 2021 cups, like the cups that she made that she traded at CookieCon. Um, her Mermaid Bay cups, she had little painting cups and she traded those um, as the gift, her gift item that she had at Cookie Con, I guess is what people are calling them. Um, but she made us some for our limited edition Christmas kit. So I'm getting to use mine today. I should have shown it to you before I filled it up, but it's so cute. Gingerbread on the front coming out of a pink package, of course. And Cookie Snack Attack 2021 on the back because it's a limited edition cup. It was just sold in that kit and only enough made for that kit. But quick shout out to Heather in case she's watching today. Let's go quickly into this because I have several more videos that I want to film for you today. So the first product is CKG, right? That stands for CK Products Glaze. So this is a bottle, um, an eight fluid ounce bottle, quite large of confectioner's glaze made by CK products. And it's just straight glaze. That's what the, is in this. And you can see it has a very yellowish 
color. Let me do it like that so you can see it. Very yellowish color to it. This is a very large bottle. Um, and this one, just so you can refer to it later, ingredients say food grade refined bleached lacquer. That's all it tells you that's in here. Um, and other than it might have been exposed to soy products. Okay, so that's it. Then there is a confectioner's glaze thinner. Okay, and this says ethyl alcohol, acetone, FDA, and then it's got the numbers for the al alcohol. Okay, packaged using machines that may come in contact with soy product. Okay, um, so, and this is also eight fluid ounces. So it was my understanding when I purchased these two things. Hey, Karen, how are you doing? It's been a hot minute since I've seen you, lady. Hope you're doing well. Okay, so the confectioner's glaze, when I bought these two products together, um, I understood that I was purchasing this to use directly on a product full strength. Then later I saw someone else's YouTube video where they used the thinner and they thinned this down before they used it. Not really sure what purpose that served, but they did it. It looked nice. So we're going to try it too. And then that this was to use to clean your brush because obviously these confectioner's glazes, if you put your brushes directly into water, your brushes seize up and they're ruined. So for the purposes of today, we're going to be using a disposable PYO brush because I haven't used all these products before. I feel comfortable using my Poppy Paint Super Shine and cleaning my brushes because I've done that before. So this I would be comfortable using with a normal brush, but I usually use disposable items in my Mad Scientist experimenting and until I know how they clean up because I don't want to ruin a good brush, okay? So this is CK Glaze. This is CK Glaze and Thinner, a 50-50 mix. This is CK Glaze Thinner, which we're just going to clean the brush in and see if this is actually any different than Everclear. And this is just regular Everclear over here, okay? So let's get that out of the way. And then the middle one is PPSS, that's Poppy Paint Super Shine, which is this little bottle, 100% edible confectionery paint. And this one says alcohol resinous glaze modified cellulose. Let me lift it a little higher just so it stays in the video for us. Oh, and look how beautiful the camera's doing today. Thank you so much. Isn't that nice? All right. So the rest of the stuff that's on that label, I believe it's like a generic label so it can cover all of their items. But the top part seems to be just related to the confectioner glaze. And then, of course, we have a cookie cookie genre stable, I guess, a, a stable, staple, staple item within the cookie community, which is PME Clear Edible Glaze Spray. A lot of us use this when we're doing isomalt work. All right, so let's see what this one says. Ooh. Let's see. Can I even find it on here? Um, you know what? I really can't. Let's see. Food grade product to protect and gloss confectionery chocolate products, decorations, and coatings. Then it has the directions. This is the one I always tell you guys, spray it outside or in an area that has a box over it because wherever this goes, because it is an aerosol, wherever this goes, it is impossible to get off. So if you get it on your computer because you're spraying near your computer when you're live streaming, it's going to live on your computer. <laughs> That's just how it is. So just please know that. Um, ingredients, glazing agents. I have to lift this higher. I don't know if you can see it, but I'll lift it up in a minute. It says shellac. And then I believe it says E904. Then it says ethyl alcohol and a propellant. Okay. And also made in a factory that uses soya lecithin. Okay. So they all seem to have very similar items in here. So what I did was I took this outside and then this little paint pod, and this is just a disposable paint pod. I sprayed it in here until it um, got a considerable amount of liquid because I didn't want to spray it during the video and risk it going up or getting on either of my cameras. Okay. So that's what we're working with today. And if you're joining us late, because I see a lot more people have joined us in the last minute or so, then there are also videos on YouTube about how to make your own confectionery glaze. I did try some of them. They did not work for me, so they are not in my experiment. I'm going back to the things that I feel like were recommended to me by other cookiers and cakers, or there are things that I've actually tried. 
So I thought this is a good time to experiment because this is one of the cookies that I wanted to seal and put a glaze on. Hello, Miss Phyllis, and Phyllis is joining from Southern California. It's great to see you. Hey, Nicole, how are you? So this cookie in particular I picked because we have five different sections of royal icing. So I thought what we would do is I'm going to sketch this on right on my paper towel. You okay, sweetheart? I'm just going to make a little sketch here. It's not going to be exact, but I'm just going to mark it so we can come back to this later tonight when we do two-part tutorial Tuesday. We do the second part. So we're going to make this section one. We're going to make this section two. We're going to make the center part here section three. This part will be four. And this will be five. Okay, so when we come back tonight, we're going to label these. So what we're going to do specifically, we may not need all these sections either, but this section one is going to be the CK glaze. Section two, we're going to do the CK glaze and thinner. Okay, the where let me show you. Let me lift this a little bit. CK glaze. I'm gonna let me mark it over here because I feel like this marker is really CK glaze and thinner together. All right. Oops, something is not on here tight and it's leaking. Hold on. This stuff will stick forever if I don't get it up. So let me just wipe that down really quick. All right. It's very potent, very potent stuff here. <laughs> Debbie, Debbie is from sunny, cold Pennsylvania. How are you today? So section three is going to be for the poppy paint. Okay. Poppy paint, super shine. Can you guys see that? Okay. All right. And then section four, we're going to do PME. And I'm going to leave section five with nothing done to it. Um, because if I don't like any of these or I have time to run to the store to grab a few items, I might mix up my own homebrew batch of confectioner's glaze just to show you the difference. But I've tested it several times. It doesn't dry well for me. So what that tells me is that I don't have it to the right consistency yet, what I need to have for it. So I just stopped fiddling with it because it wasn't something I needed a lot of. And when I do use this, it's primarily to seal cookies before pouring ice malt and then to seal my ice malt after I've poured it to keep it from fogging or to just like preserve a cookie that I'm going to keep as an ornament, like to just seal it all in there so it doesn't, um, doesn't erode over time, right? To give it a nice glaze or to put finishing touches on like sculpted fondant pieces or display pieces for cakes or cake toppers or cookies. Um, I do use it a lot on things that I do when I take Timbo's classes. There's certain things that you can put it on like the gnarly teeth and the eyeballs that just really make those pop. So I do it. I do like to use it for that. Um, but it doesn't, my homemade one was not successful for me. So I'll leave five open and maybe we'll come back and do section five with that. But for this video, let's go ahead and jump in right now. And we'll start with, and I'm going to hold these tightly, all six of these pods and give them a good shake because they've been in here about an hour. I pre oops, see something still leaking on me and I was holding it tight. I just don't want it to live on my table. I have a nice table that I work on that was made for us when we got married. And um, I don't want to ruin my table. So I try to be careful with the experimenting here. Hey, hey, who's working on cookie orders? Who is this? I hope that you're going to get them all done so that you are not part of team no sleep. Get them done quick. And Chili in Houston, back up to, oh, 80s by Christmas. Yes, that sounds fun. All right, let's pop over here. We're going to start with the CK glaze, okay? I'm just going to pop the paint pot open. We're going to be using our disposable brush, okay, because I haven't used this before on a cookie. And for our experiment, we're doing section one. I'm not going to put anything on the fondant part, but can you guys, let's move this up a little bit. I don't want to spill this, so we'll move this down, move this up. Can you guys see already? Maybe I should zoom in a little. Do you want me to zoom in a little, you guys? Let's see what it looks like if I zoom, because I really want you. Hey, Maggie, I really want you to see what it looks like as the liquid's going on. Like, it's an immediate difference. All right, let me see if I can shift it up a little bit. 
I just have to tilt it. It's immediate coating normally on this. Now, this one seems to be kind of sinking in, the CK glaze, using it at 100%. It just seems like it's sinking in, although it is, you know, putting that initial wet shine to it. Maybe you have to layer this one. We we'll, might have to circle back. I'm not sure yet. All right. These were both new bottles. I haven't used them at all yet. Now, I'm going to use my little cup over here. This is just straight Everclear. And in between each of these, since I'm using different products and I don't want to contaminate from one to the other. Um, hey, uh, Rebecca, how are you? So I'm going to just clean it in the Everclear. And you can see my brush is still loose. No problems with it. If you put that into water, though, your brush is going to seize up and be ruined. Now, I don't really think this one is going to accomplish a whole lot because this is the CK Glaze thinned out. So it's already going to be thinner. I think it'll look wet initially. But then I think, yeah, it just evaporates. It's like basically just evaporating into the cookie. So that's doing nothing. Okay. So let's clean the brush again and some Everclear off to the side here. I think I know um, where we're going to be going. But I mean, I think we're, what this is going to end up with just based on these first two things. But I want to try all of them while I have all the products. So now we're going to swap over to Poppy Paint Super Shine. And we're going to do that on this section. Uh, no, this section. That's Section 3 is labeled for Poppy Paint Super Shine for when we come back later. And guys, when you do these experiments, please always make a little chart and label it. And um, furthermore, always label it directionally as well because you do so many things in a day that you can forget. So X marks the spot for the ornaments because this cutter, you can rotate it. So if you have a cutter that can be flipped and still look the same like this cutter, then you need to label that as well. All right. So now we're using Poppy Paint Super Shine. My brush is still good. No problems with it. I'm going to grab a little bit of this and we're just going to paint this center section. Now, Poppy Paint Super Shine is one of my favorite things to use because it goes glossy immediately and it stays glossy. So I'll show you what I mean in just a second. Now, I know a lot of people say, oh, I'll never use that again. It ruined my brush. Well, it's really not the product's fault because it does tell you that you have to not to put it into water. You have to clean it in the um, a proper alcohol afterwards. Otherwise, yes, it will ruin your brush. So it's labeled on the box. You just have to make sure when you're trying new products, you guys, that you really give a good read to what you're supposed to do with them. Okay. Now let me draw. I'm dropping my brush into some Everclear. Let's take a quick look. So you can see this CK just basically sunk into the fondant, although we're going to give it another chance and give it a couple layers. But you can see this one I just did, and it's super shiny. So remember earlier I said I was going to go right to Poppy Paint and seal this because I knew by putting that on that where my royal icing had dried with the matte finish, that by putting the, the Poppy Paint Super Shine on there, that it would bring the red up to the same color that we dyed our fondant 3D ribbon pieces. So do you see what I mean by that? Like now the red looks the same because it has a wet finish on it, a glossier finish. So that is Poppy Paint Super Shine right there in the center. So let's go on to number four and let's try the PME spray. <clears throat> I suspect that my PME spray is going to be just as glossy and bring the color up to the same red, just like the Poppy Paint Super Shine did, but it's in an aerosol form. So totally different times to use these two things. But for us, I just tested it by spraying it directly into this little paint pod and miss karen poppy paint super shine um, can be purchased at bees baked art supplies if they have it in stock um, you can get poppy paint from them as well the colors so we're going to test the pme i'm trying not to touch it because it's the one that's leaking and it's sticky already all right so remember off to the side i have my little thing of Everclear that I dropped my brush into. I'm cleaning between each use because I don't want to contaminate from product to product. Now you can see my brush is not ruined. This is just a cheap disposable brush because we're experimenting. But you guys can see that if you put it into the proper thing after you use it, the brush is perfectly fine. 
meaning do not drop a confectioner's glaze brush into water. If you put it into water, it will seize up and it will be extremely difficult to get it out of the brush. You can sometimes get it out by soaking your brush overnight and ever clear, but then that leads to other problems with the brush. So just don't put it in water, okay? Put it in alcohol immediately after using it. So this is PME spray and we have it marked to be this upper area. And I'm going to go right in here. Now, the basic thing about the PME spray, obviously, is that it's aerosol, right? <clears throat> now, I will say that the PME, I can tell it's putting a glaze on it. Um, it's more than I can see with these two products on this side, um, but not quite to the level of shine of the center one. Not just yet. So let's just do another light layer and see what happens here. Now, the real kicker that I didn't label for the experiment, but we're going to go back and do, I really want you to see what these confectioner glazes look like on top of the fondant. And we use straight fondant to make these two bow loops. So this one I'm going to do with the PME, and this one we're going to go back and do with the Poppy Paint Super Shine. And then that'll be the end of our test for right now. But watch this on camera because it's a huge difference on what it looks like going directly on fondant, which is so nice for mixed medium cookies when you're making teeth and eyeballs and um, florals even. Can you see the stripe? Literally, the stripe is still there on top, super shiny. Okay, so the glaze in this with the poppy paint and here with the PME did bring the intensity of the red up on top of the royal icing, but I do think it's going to take a couple of coats. Dropping my brush over into the Everclear again, and we're going to go back and create this same like stripe using the poppy paint super shine on the other side so that you can see the difference it makes on top of fondant. By the way, the shine in my experimenting, um, everything I'm using right now is 100% FDA approved, all of these. Now, another warning that you should know if you're not familiar with using confectioner's glaze it stinks. When it is wet, it stinks and it has a very terrible odor to it, which should make sense if you inspect the ingredients because it has an alcohol in it. Most all of them are an alcohol base. And so that alcohol needs to evaporate. And then it's just like as if you were using alcohol and a luster dust to paint on a cookie, the taste and the odor dissipate. But never try to spray this and eat it to see if it's going to affect your cookie. You need to spray it or paint it, let it sit, and then hours later when it's dry, go back and test it. And then you'll see that you do not have the odor or, and my brush still good, you guys, you don't have the odor or the foul taste. If you do it right when it comes out of the bottle or out of the little container, they smell bad and they taste bad. And that should make sense once you inspect the items. Okay. This is Poppy Paint Super Shine. And we're working over here on this section, but can you see the glaze? You see how shiny it makes your fondant pieces. So this is, again, something you can do well ahead of time if you're making fondant pieces to add to your finished cookies later. Now, looking at comparing the poppy paint to the PME, they brought it to the same level of intensity. And to me, naked eye, they have the same level of shine. So the difference between these would be one is, is applied with a brush and the other is an aerosol spray. So you get a fine mist. But you can see both of these things, even next to the center part where I put poppy paint on royal icing, this is much higher intensity shine. All right, and since we're into this and I have the poppy paint open and it's the one I like to use with the brush, how about we go ahead and seal our little gold ornament so you can see that too. Let's just do a stripe on it. The purpose of sealing a metallic item, something that you've painted with a metallic luster dust, would be just that over time that dust is going to separate and it be, when you touch it, it gets like a little film on your hands. It doesn't stay as a as permanent, you know, you can wipe it and get that little film. So looking at the ornament, I just glazed just a stripe down the center. The whole thing is still shiny, obviously, because it's a metallic. But as far as long-term sealing of the item, you need to go ahead and seal the whole bit. Okay, so I am going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and seal my whole ornament since I want to use this up. 
but I'm sealing it with Poppy Paint Super Shine because I want to use a brush on this. The PME comes in particularly handy if you're just joining us. I see a few more people with us. The PME for me comes in and is particularly useful when we are um, about to do isomalt work. And I need to seal the cookie before pouring the isomalt so that over time that moisture from the cookie doesn't release and fog my isomalt or in sealing my isomalt after it's been poured and cooled. So I use it for both. Now, this is our actual poppy paint test. I'm just putting on another layer while I have it open. And then the ribbon to the left is also with poppy paint. So putting another, another swipe on it. And now my royal icing, since my first swath or test, it seems to have sealed it up enough that now it is actually, it's got a nice, it's getting a glaze. Can you see it in the center? So it, the first layer kind of sealed it so that it could accept it and get glossier. And now... You guys, can you see all the definition from where we taught you that grow grain ribbon texturing? You can literally, because we glazed it, you can see all of that extra detail just popping off those ribbon bow loops. All right. So let's leave this. I can tell you tonight when this whole thing is over after two part tutorial Tuesday, the whole cookie is either going to get hand painted in PME or the whole cookie will go outside and be sprayed up. Uh, sorry, hand painted with poppy paint super shine using a brush or the whole cookie will go outside and get sprayed down front, back sides, everything with the PME spray glaze. Okay. So just these two right now, my favorites are these. I'm sure there is a really good use for the CK edible glaze. Um, it is my guess. This is more of a cake item. Their confectioner's glaze. That's what the caker recommended it to me for, for larger projects. So I'm sure that if I was actually using this for what it, you know, what it was meant for, because this is more of a cake product, I believe, that it would be popping off too. But you guys can see in the comparison here. And why don't we do this while we're on, just to make sure we're giving everybody fair time. Let's take the CK glaze and let's do a stripe in the center here on the ribbon and let's see what it does on the fondant. All right, I'm giving it a quick stir. And let's go ahead and do it on just the fondant, just a stripe. And then let's go ahead and do um, an additional coating here now that it's sealed and see what that does for this. We know that it brought the red up a level intensity of color because the red was very matte. But let's see if it works like the poppy paint did in the center where after that initial coat dried, it kind of gave it a crust and then we were able to really glaze it. And it is, you guys. So in all fairness on these, this is the CK glaze. This is poppy paint super shine here and here. And this is... Um, here is the PME and the PME from this spray can. Now I'm looking at it and my poppy paint is still the shiniest of all of them on my red, but perhaps it's different on different colors. We'll have to test that later. Um, okay. So I, Barbara's asking about the taste more one than another. I have done a taste comparison on a dried cookie 12 hours later on the PME and the poppy paint super shine, but I have not used this CK before, so I can't speak to it as far as taste, but the other two, I couldn't taste them at all and I, no odor at all after the 12 hours after everything was dry. But you can see guys, the use for this, if you have a highly detailed cookie, um, yes, the CK was cheaper, Courtney, but with taking this into account, this one is obviously gonna be more expensive because you're buying the aerosol format, so this is definitely more expensive, but it's also partly because of the format you're buying it in. Um, Poppy Paint Super Shine. Uh, it's, if you're using this one as your base, then the CK is cheaper than this probably by ounce. But you can see the difference in what you're getting out of the two, right? So you have to make that call on what you need it for. Um now, the reason I think that CK is more cake-based, it's a caker that told me about it. And I also know that that friend who's a caker uses poppy paint and they use PME. But for the cake project I was working on, they recommended the CK. I'm sure that has something to do with volume and pricing. 
for that, um, that it was going to do what I needed it to do in the price point I needed it to accomplish that in. But for a cookie or something like this, or even a competition piece, I would, I would probably be going with looking for something to make something shiny or more higher gloss to bring out details, just like what happened here. It was very hard to read that grow grain ribbon imprint in our fondant before we glazed it. But now it's like, it's popping off the cookie, right? Totally different deal. And you can see how shiny my ornament is. Even though I use the metallic, it looks like it's been fully lacquered, like a hand-painted Christmas ornament. Okay, so here's our test. We'll come back to all of this tonight. I'm going to set it aside, but just one more quick look. We have it labeled. We have the orientation of our cookie labeled with regard to where the ornament is. So we know we'll be doing an equal comparison tonight. I will smell the cookie tonight so that you can, you know, that I've actually done the scent test and then, but I'm not going to taste it because this cookie was not made for eating. It was like super, super overbaked to be using for demos in class. So I can't do the taste test on it, but I have taste tested the PME and taste tested the poppy paint super shine. And both of those were fine. No, nothing with them. So if someone wants to test the CK and report back, you definitely can do that. We've got this marked. We'll come back and look at it later. All of our little pods here are marked, but I'm going to fix them really quick because a few things are wearing off. And I just want you to see it on camera so you know I haven't pulled a switcheroo on you. So that's the CK Glaze. The second one is CK Glaze and Thinner to a 50-50 mixture. And then this is CK Thinner. This was Poppy Paint Super Shine. Can you guys see that okay? And this was PME spray. This came from the aerosol can, but I sprayed it into the paint pod so that we could do an equal comparison on camera. And this was just straight Everclear in case I needed to clean it. But then I remembered I had this really cool cup that Heather had made for our kits. And so I pulled that out and filled it with Everclear using a disposable brush because, again, I wasn't sure how the CK was going to react. But my brush is perfectly fine. The key here with any confectioner's glaze is do not put your brush into water to clean it. It will seize up your brushes. Now, everyone goes, oh, they're ruined. Well, technically, they probably are ruined. However, I have managed to salvage a few brushes um, that I seized when I first started experimenting and hadn't read the instructions. Um, I, my brush seized up, but then I soaked them overnight and just straight Everclear. And the brush did clean up. I was able to get all the stuff out. Okay. But it affected the metal a little bit on the brush. And on one of the brushes, it was just a cheap wooden handle brush like this. And it affected the paint. Now the paint wasn't in the Everclear, but obviously the moisture traveled up through that and it affected the paint. So yes, I ruined my brush, but not because I couldn't get it out of the bristles, but because it was a cheaper brush soaking in Everclear overnight. Okay. So I hope that helps and explains a lot about these different glazes, but even on camera right now, I think it's pretty obvious that the um, the poppy paint here, poppy paint even versus this, just the one coat, it's like out, it's out shining. I mean, look, everything else, like I think I can bring this up to the same level of shine, but it's going to take a couple more coats. So then that factors into Miss Barbara's question, um, sorry, no, Courtney's question about pricing. Maybe something any product. Let's not make it relevant to this because I think it's worth talking about with regard to any product that you use when you're baking. Sometimes something is cheaper when you purchase it, but it ends up costing more per ounce in the long run because you either have to do more layers or um, you can't dilute it or, um, you know, there's just a whole variety of reasons, various reasons that might happen that might make it cost more in the long run. So I think the more important thing is to do these tests in your area where your humidity is what it is constantly, your altitude is what it is constantly. Find the thing that works the best that takes the least amount of time to work. Why does that matter? Because time's money, cooking for profit, cooking for volume, all of those factors affect what it's actually costing you. Sometimes the cost of a product is not just the price you paid for the product, but what it causes to happen as you're using it. So if I have to go and paint something four times to get to a high gloss shine, that costs me time. So maybe my per ounce was a little cheaper, 
right? But in the long run, it costs me more money because I had to do it more times. So I think what you'll find over time as you experiment with these different products and check them in the area where you actually live, because a lot of this is also affected by that. For me, each season, we have four seasons all about three months long. Every season is slightly different. So there's times of the year that I can use fondant. There's times of the year, um, well, I can use fondant all year long, no problem. I can use fondant and modeling chocolate blended for part of the year with no problem. And then there's a certain time of the year where it's much cooler and I can use straight modeling chocolate, which is my preference because it's like having a candy bar on a cookie or with a cookie. So why not? Just kicks it up a notch. But then there's times where I can't send cookies out with modeling chocolate on it because I know that they're going to end up in a hot car and then all of that work is going to be ruined, right? So there's things like that. So in that case, yes, the modeling chocolate would have been better, but if the cookie comes back and needs something replaced quickly, then it actually cost me more time uh, and made things more expensive. Does that make sense? Um you can do both, Courtney. You can do both. You can paint modeling chocolate and you can color it before you make your bits and pieces. And then, then you come to the point of, do you want to seal it or not? And that's a whole nother thing, but this works on that as well. All right. So that is going to be it for today. I hope you enjoyed this mad scientist experiment segment. I love these. I have a few more plans, but I'm not going to do them all today. So in a little bit, I was, I'm going to come back on in just a little bit. It won't be long. I'll probably set it up for three o'clock. I'm going to come back and oops, just so that you know what we're doing in case you can't tune into everything today, because there's going to be in total four videos today. Our third video, we're going to come back and do some work with these fondant, um, fondant cutouts with the depressors. And we're going to talk about ways to use this. Okay. Now, please feel free to send me messages if you have questions. Uh, it's totally fine to send me messages. It's totally fine to ask questions in the group. Please share the group, share the video, and let's try to get over 1,800 before tomorrow, okay? And um, let's get our group above 2,000 so we have lots more cookie friends to hang out with. I'll see you guys soon. Hope you enjoyed it. And have a